Hello everybody, I'm Blazer Rebecca and welcome back to Shinrai Broken Beyond Despair. Uh, we have to go down to the break. We have to- oh wait, shivering I wrap my arms around my body and direct my gaze to our right. Before I go any further, there was a notebook entry. Locked rooms. Oh jeez, that's so much. I'm not gonna read that shit. Hmm. Okay, now we should get on. There at the end of the hallway, I see a big circular window. Pale moonlight was pouring in through its wooden grates, drenching our feet in a ghostly glow as it spilled across the floor, which was covered by a faint carpet of mist. The moonlight wasn't the only thing that managed to get inside, however. Since the window wasn't sealed with glass, the grates had rather big openings. The frosty mountain air had an easy time infiltrating the building and latching onto our skin. The thing is really cold here. And pretty dark, too. Even with the moonlight falling in. Indeed. Rubbing my hands across my arms, I looked down, down the other side of the corridor. Back when Runa had led us to the dining hall, this place had been illuminated by the warm flicker of numerous candlelights. Now, however, not a single, not even a single candle was left burning. Hmm. Huh? Curious, I turned towards the candle stand right next to us. Although faint, there was still a hint of the distinct scent of candle smoke lingering in the air, and when I pressed my finger to the wax, it, ra it seemed rather soft and moldable. Interesting. What's interesting? And what you doing over there anyway? Oh, nothing. I was just checking something. In any case, I guess we need to watch our step now, huh? Y yeah. What? With the candlelight gone, our only main light source was the moon outside. Unfortunately, it's been short nearly enough to suppress the predominant darkness. They only reach as far as maybe the middle of the hallway. Everything beyond that point was shrouded in a thick cloud of obscurity. From back here, I couldn't even make out the door leading to the reception. It was really hard to believe that this was the same corridor as before. When we had first arrived here, it had made such a welcoming feeling of warmth and coziness. But now, it was raining and it was radiating an uncanny, almost sinister atmosphere. How the hell are you even supposed to get to the basement in this darkness? We're gonna trip and roll all over the place. Maybe we should ask Ray to give us a flashlight or a candle or something. I doubt she'd do that. Eh? What's that? I'll explain it on the way. What? But, just stick close to me, okay? We should be fine as long as we move slowly and carefully. Okay. Although a little reluctant, Barton did as she was told, stepping right behind me, and rested her shaking hands on my shoulders. I could feel her warm, warm breath on my neck as she whispered into my ear. Ah! I'm ready. <laughs> this is kind of adorable, though. I think, more or less. Let's just go and get this over with. Uh, all right. <laughs> New in, no, info, a new notebook entry has been added. As we moved towards the darkness, leaving that big pile of moonlight behind us, all we could hear was the sound of my, our own footsteps. Okay, before that, corridor candles. Nimble candles were replaced in regular intervals throughout the first floor harmony. When I first arrived here in Runa led us to the dining hall, they had illuminated the entire corridor. I can't really make any estimates about their initial measurements, but currently they are about 5 centimeters in diameter and 14 centimeters in height. When I examined the one near the dining hall entrance more closely, I noticed that some of the wax was still soft and moldable, indicating that it hadn't been extinguished for too long. Okay. It's placed too far apart from the window and then blown out by the wind coming from the outside. Merely glance at it tells you that, that it didn't burn out by itself either. Someone must have blown it on purpose, and most likely all the ca other candles as well. Oh, oh! Is that what the notebook things are for? Even the soothing whistles of the wind gradually fade into the distance between us, behind us. 
The only thing that actually kept accompanying us down the hallway was the chilly air. And it was getting colder and colder the further we advanced. According to Ray, the breaker room was directly beneath the dining hall. So in order to get there, we had to take the staircase located on the other side of this hallway, and then... Ah! Move down the, enti down the entire basement corridor. That was actually some, quite some distance to cover. And at our current pace, it was going to take us a while to do so. Especially with a certain someone being so overly hesitant about moving ahead. Do we really have to do this? Yes. Or would you rather not have the lights turn back on? Well, no, but... I don't want to go into the basement. Why not? Why not? How can you be so... How can you even be so calm about this? Who knows what's gonna be waiting for us down there? Hold on. May as well save here. This might be the last maybe we ever get to see. Honestly, you're such a chicken. <laughs> you're such a chicken, Barra. It's just the basement. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of down there. We're not in some cheap horror flick, you know. No, but you're in a horror game. <laughs> How can you be so sure? Uh. Come on, I mean, someone must have caught the power to go poof, right? Maybe, maybe something's there? Someone who's wanting to murder us! Back in that movie! Barshan, don't be silly. Ray said she left the break room unlocked, right? I bet someone's stuck in there and turned the lights off. Yeah, it was probably Ray herself. And now they're waiting for someone to come down and check what's going on. So they kill him! How would they have entered the resort in the first place, though? Ray locked the entrance after we arrived, remember? So what? Maybe they got in some other way. O or maybe it was one of them ghosts. Oh, please. That pamphlet Ray gave us so something about this whole air being hard, right? Shit, we're so freaking screwed, man. Curses. I knew I shouldn't have let her re I, le I, shouldn't I knew I shouldn't have let her read that pamphlet during dinner. But even if I hadn't, I guess it wouldn't have made much of a difference in that way anyway. The movie had done a lot more damage to her mental state than I thought. Anyway, I had to do something to calm her down before her condition could get worse. Once Barton switched from that simple scary tech to we're all goners mode, it was very difficult to make her think rationally again. Barton, don't tell me you fell so easily for this. Huh? Wh what do you mean? Wait, don't tell me you know what's going on here. It's painfully obvious, I'd say. It is? Th then who's behind us? It's a ghost, right? It's gotta be. Oh dear. It looked as though it looked as though her rational thing was already on the verge of saying bye bye. I had to quickly convince her that there weren't any ghosts or murders involved in this. Mere words weren't going to suffice, though. If I wanted to convince her, I had to offer more than just theories. I had to back up my claims with actual evidence. However, before that, it was probably best to name the culprit first. And obviously, the person responsible for this blackout was none other than... Well, obviously, it's blatantly obvious! It's like, it couldn't have been... I mean, it wasn't, couldn't have been me, it certainly wasn't her, it wasn't Runa, not Nika, not Taiko, Kotaba, Kamen, Hiro, or Momoko. It was clearly Rei, the only one who wasn't in the room with us. R right? Of course. Who else could it be? Well, wouldn't the ghost of something you would kill and make a lot more sense? <sighs> Curses. Of course it wasn't going to be that easy. Oh well, I had presented my theory. Now was my time to back it up with evidence. Okay, first of all, don't you think it was weird that Runa blew out all the candles in the dining hall right after Ray left for the restroom? You know, shortly before that blackout occurred. Well, Ray said she would get, would get the main event once you returned, right? Maybe we were gonna leave the dining hall and go somewhere else. So it's about to kill them candles, right? 
But what about the candles here in the hallway? Nothing that strikes you as odd about them? Not really. When we first came through here, all the candles were lit, remember? Well, it's been a while since then. They probably just burned out by themselves. Mm-mm. No, no. Come on, that can't be right. Huh? All right, it was time to present some evidence to show her assumption was, assumption was wrong. Luckily, I had been taking notes and pictures of everything that seemed suspicious or important to me. So somewhere in my notebook, I should have been just the thing I needed. All I had to do was find an entry proving that the candles hadn't burned out by themselves. Select it then, and then present it. Easy enough. Gee, I wonder, it must be the large red- No, it's quarter candles. Take a look at these candles. They're rather thick and long. It would take them several hours to burn out by themselves, and as you can see, they still have long ways to go. What's more, the candle box on, on the one near the sliding doors hasn't completely dried yet. In other words, not much time has passed since it was blown out. Well, it was probably the wind then, huh? No. It might be a little windy outside, but the breeze coming in through the window isn't nearly strong enough to blow out a candle like that. So then you're saying Ray blew, blew all them candles out here out? Exactly. The question is, why would she do that? Considering that the wax hasn't completely dried yet, she must have blown them out on her way back from the restrooms. But by that time, the power has already occurred, so why would she do that? Good point. If we assume she's the one behind the power outage, it makes sense, doesn't it? There's no point in turning off the power if the candles are still burning everywhere. I guess. Also, don't you think it's odd that she sent us, of all people, to take care of the power problem? She and Runa know this place much better than we do. Moreover, Ray said the breaker room was already open, right? But that isn't that also really weird? I is it? Well, it contradicts a certain statement Ray made earlier. This is gonna be the ro locked room one for evidence. Locked rooms. Show. Ray told us she locked almost every room in the entire resort. Even our room up on the third floor. Why does she do that again? So no one could sneak in and do something stupid in there. My coat bore Mika. Right. But th isn't it strange then? That out of all the rooms, she left the one with the breaker box unlocked? Wouldn't that be the first room you'd want to secure so no one can fool around with the power? Y yeah. I could imagine that'd be something Mika to like to do and own would scare us. In fact, did she even pull something like that during our last school trip? Yes. Well, we all know Ray's an airhead, so she probably forgot about locking it. Just how she accidentally locked the toilets instead. But Ray herself said that the break room was unlocked, meaning she was aware of it. Then maybe she thought no one would be able to find it anyway? Wrong again. It would have been easy to find for anyone thanks to this. What? 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 I, I don't know. I don't know! Lock rooms? I don't think this is gonna help me here. I need something else. Like, what? Well, I don't know! There's something I'm missing here. Stuck here, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The one thing I have is clues and evidence, and I don't have much in that. I don't have these two things. I have to show something to prove that anyone could find the break room without ever having been there before. It also had to be an eye, which was rather easy to acquire. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. 
Oh, jeez, I was stuck there for a second. I thought I was going to have to end it there. Remember? She gave us a pamphlet shortly after we arrived. This pamphlet includes a map of the basement. If she gave me one to all of us, or if everyone just took one from the reception, any of us could locate the break room quite effortlessly. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here, and I'll be back with more. See ya!